all you need to remember are these two things. And we're talking about God's commandments here. This is by Father Stavros. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they came together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. This is Matthew twenty-two thirty-four 34 to 40. From the gospel read at the bridegroom service on Holy Monday evening, Tuesday of the second week of Lent. Can you name all Ten Commandments? Most of us can name at least seven or eight of them. Most of us probably forget one or two. At least when we hear the phrase, the Ten Commandments, we know what is being refer it's being referred to. Did you know that the Old Testament, there are actually 613 commandments? There are the ten we are most familiar with, as well as 603 others. And the re these rules are not suggestions, they are commandments. They comprise what's called the Mosaic Law, and they are found in the Old Testament, Book of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Here are two random commandments from the list of 613. If you lend money to any of my people with you who is poor, you shall not be to him as a creditor, and you shall not exact interest from him. Exodus 22 to 25. You shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain. Deuteronomy 25, 4. Having read over the list of 613 commandments, the list is daunting to merely read, let alone memorize, let alone put into practice. In the Old Testament, it was the priests who were charged with the keeping and enforcing of the law. Of course, we realized back then that most people did not read. They lived a simpler agrarian lifestyle, and this opened the door for abuses by the temple priests to bind heavy burdens on the people who couldn't follow the law and who could follow the law, every last commandment of the 613, no one. Jesus simplified all of this when he condensed all of the law, 613 commandments, into two commandments, love God and love your neighbor. Everything in the law falls under one of these two commandments. Take just the Ten Commandments. Having no other gods before us, not worshipping graven images, not taking the Lord's name in vain, and remembering the Sabbath to keep it holy, fall under the commandment to love God. Honoring father and mother, not killing, not committing adultery, not stealing, not bearing false witness, and not coveting, fall under the commandment to love your, our, neighbor, your, our neighbors. So imagine the anger of the temple elite who came to trap Jesus by goading him into answering the question about which of the laws was the greatest. He took the plenitude of the law, which had been mastered only by the priests, and made it acceptable to all people. As Christians today, we don't have to memorize the Mosaic Law. We don't even necessarily need to memorize the Ten Commandments. If we are loving God and loving our neighbor, we are following God's law. And if even two commandments are too much to remember, you can summarize the entirety of all commandments in one word, love. If we think about it, all sins can have one cause, failure to love. Failure to love is what causes us to sin. That's why Jesus talks about love so much, because love is the basis for God creating the world. Failure to love God is what led to the fall of mankind. John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The potential for salvation is rooted in God's love. And finally, our judgment before God and his decision to admit us to his kingdom will be based on whether we have loved him and our neighbor and on his mercy and love towards us. Christianity is not a contest to memorize laws. Rather, it is supposed to be a life centered around loving God and loving others. For we don't worship rules, we worship the Lord, and we do that by loving him and one another. Into the splendor of your saints, how can I, the unworthy, enter? For shall I dare to come into the bridal chamber? My vesture will reproach me, not being a wedding garment. 
and bound, I shall be cast out by the angels. O Lord, cleanse the impurity of my soul and save me. This is from the Phrases of the Bridegroom Service of Holy Monday, translated by Father George Papadeus. Show love for God and for your neighbor in all that you do today. This is from Father Stavros Akrodirianakis, Orthodox Christian Network. It's on Ortho Christian. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. God bless you always. Thank you. Finally, support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.